All right. Welcome everybody uh, to our presentation of Asai Kase and the Fraunhofer Institute. Um, we are focusing today on a collaboration project we have uh, worked on together. And basically we are focusing on a new polyamide development in combination with recycled fiber converted in a non-woven and a thermoplastic organo sheet. Um, my name is Marcus Greger. I walk you through the next uh, probably eight minutes and then I hand over to my industry colleague, Frank Manis. Um, let me give you first a brief introduction about Asai Kase. For those of you who don't know the company, we are a Japanese company headquartered in Tokyo. Um, we are focusing on three areas, homes, healthcare, and materials. In the material sector, we are looking into polymers, fibers, rubbers, thermoplastic elastomers, and uh, much more. Our turnover in the fiscal year 21 was uh, around 20 billion US dollar, and almost 50% came from the material sector. Um, also, our famous Nobel Prize winner, Yoshino-san, uh, is part of that group who received the Nobel Prize in 2019 for the development of the lithium-ion battery. Um, as I said, we are a global player. Traditionally, we are located in Asia, um, but as well also in Europe and in North America. Um, my Japanese colleagues have worked strongly over the last three, four years with Frank. Uh, they were not able to come here, so I'm jumping in and uh, present you the, uh, the slides. I'm headquartered in our European uh, facility in Dusseldorf. Uh, the, the European entity exists since 2016. And uh, in 2020-21, we bundled all the innovation efforts um, in our uh, technical center. Um, you see the middle picture, the local R&D. That's where all the technical things happen. Injection molding, compounding, material development, application testing. Um, also, three new technologies are located there. These are engineering plastic beads. Uh, for battery cell holders, cellulose nanofibers uh, to incorporate into compounds, and the topic of today, uh, composites. Um, as Asai can say, we produce polyamides since 1972. We are a backwards integrated manufacturer. Um, we manufacture PA66, 610, 612, and semi aromatic polyamides mainly for the markets automotive, E&E, uh, &E, EV, industrial application, water applications. Um, so as we today, we talk more about the composites. Um, one of the innovation projects is the UD tape development for my colleagues in, in Japan. Um, they are able to produce a UD tape with a width of one meter and with a thickness, or let's better say thinness, of 100 microns um, by using a 50% carbon fiber content. And they have very high mechanical properties and especially seal strength is uh, very good. So let's uh, look a bit more in detail into the polymer for the scientists and the engineer uh, here in the audience. So it's a polyamide 666i copolymer we are using in the work with Frank. Um, it has a very low melt viscosity. The melt viscosity was measured with a uh, cone plate method. Um, the low melt viscosity helps the good impregnation of the fibers, and that leads to a very strong adhesion between the layers. And there is also a connection between the polymer end chain with the uh, fiber sizing agent. On the right side, upper right side, you see uh, a cooling graph of a DSC, and what you basically see there, the, the blue line is the PA666i, which we are using. It has, a, it has no dedicated peak, and that's actually an advantage because it has a wider process window and also a slightly lower processing temperature, and that was beneficial for the later process you will see in a couple of minutes. Um, on the bottom left, this is from the 
textbook uh, the equation of the pull-out force um, to pull the fiber out of the matrix. At one point you reach, I mean it's broken, then you pull out the fiber. And the hypothesis of the team in Japan was with the new polymer there should lead to uh, a higher pull-out strength. And uh, that's what they measured with a PA6, a commonly used PA6, um, with an Asahi PA66 and with our Asahi PA666i. And uh, they could find that the new polyamide development leads to the highest um, tau, tau D. So now moving uh, to my last slide um, from the UD tape. As you know, you use it for compression molding and you produce the final products. There's always some, some scrap, some leftovers, some maybe some scrap parts. Uh, traditional approach, you grind it and you put it into an injection molding compound um, and you could maybe reuse it in other applications or in the supporting structure of the final product. But what's so valuable in this initial final part are the long fibers. And uh, that was the attempt to keep the long fibers uh, in the work with Frank. Um, use the recycled carbon fiber, convert it in a non-woven into a new sheet and compression mold it so that we can close uh, the circle here. And with that being said, I hand over to my colleague Frank. Thank you, Markus. Yeah, welcome also from my side. Uh, my name is Frank. I'm the group leader of the recycling department at the Fraunhofer IGCV. Uh, we work in the recycling since now 10 years, starting with a small working group, now growing from year to year. Now we have about 10 to 15 people working in recycling. And since the last years, Asai Kasai is a strong partner for us, so we work together since many years now for recycling. Um, when we talk about recycling, we mean the recycled carbon fiber that we try to put use in a new application. And Asai Kasai, as a polymer manufacturer, was delivering the thermoplastic polymer for that. So let's just give you a small introduction of the IGCV. So we are in Germany, in the southern German part in Augsburg. That's next to Munich, one hour drive from Munich. Uh, we have about 300 people working in the institute. Uh, one third of that is working in Augsburg in the composite business, and a third of that is working in the recycling department. So why is that important? I think something like that you have seen in the last decade and last days also here on Jack. The waste is increasing, there's a lot of carbon fiber, there are a lot of products that use a high amount of carbon, and this is also increasing, like wind turbine blades, aerospace, a little bit automotive, and all those parts will come to an end in a couple of years. So that's a study of the Fraunhofer IGCV, where we collected the data of products that are in the market at the moment, correlate that with the lifetime of these products, so that you see how much end-of-life waste will come back after a certain period of time. Additionally to that, there's a lot of cut-off waste also coming back to the market. There's also production scrap, quality waste, so even more waste that you can see here. So here we come up with 200,000 tons by 2045, but if you also take the other waste into account, we'll come up to 1 million tons of recycled products, of recycled carbon fiber, so only the fiber by 2045. So this means we should find solutions, should not burn the fiber, should not use them in any kind of low property applications. Our approach is always to find very high strength, high stiff applications for recycled carbon fibers because the fiber itself is still totally intact after the recycling. You have like 90, 95% of the properties and you can build up very strong composites by this material. And that's something that we push over the last years and now together with Asai Kasai. So recycling is very complex. So that's one of the slides I always use for students uh, if I give any lectures for students because when we talk about recycling, you've seen it, I think, in the Jack here on different booths. You have companies working on the fiber source, like reclaiming the fiber during a pearlysis or solvolysis, hot steam, microwave pearlysis. So yesterday we were at the Startup Booster and there were, I think, eight out of 10 companies were recycling companies at the Startup Booster. So you see there's a huge increase in company density for recycling, and they're working somewhere around here, right? So it could be a reclaiming process, could be a textile process, but also could be a company that's making applications and products out of it. 
For the Asaika Sai project, we choose this process route. So we have cutoff waste coming here from production scrap, means they still have a sizing on it, so they're very smooth. That's a very good boundary conditions to go into the uh, dry laying, into the carding. So you can use this for long fibers and produce like a textile with 100, 200, 300 gram per square meters. And then after that, using a thermoplastic route. You have seen on the last slide, if I go just back one second, there are also many other opportunities what you can do. So you can go for wet laying, for shorter fibers. Uh, like we at Fraunhofer, we have a wet laying machine at our institute that can work with short fibers. The longer fibers, like non-woven, is a little bit more used at the moment in the industry. And then in the last step, when you go to the part production, there are more or many routes that you can go to to make the part. We choose to make the organo sheet and then the hot forming process to have a very good scalability and for high cycle time and for very high serial application. So what you see on the left is like the typical non-woven. So if you buy a hybrid non-woven, means it's mixed with any thermoplastic fibers, the polymer is always in the fiber shape. So the thermoplast fiber is always entangled into the non-woven and so it has to be spin out before. For spin out the fiber, you need like a long molecular weight so it survives the spinning process. And this leads to also sometimes higher viscosities. What we choose here in this project was not going to the fiber. So we go straight from the polymer, grind that down and use that as a powder and apply the powder on top of the non-woven. So this is very good because you can see on the right side, you have a very homogeneous application of the powder. So there's a powder scattering, putting the powder on top of the non-woven, and so the, the uh, aerial weight of the powder and also the homogeneity of the powder is very precise. You always have the same amount of polymer on different areas of the non-woven. And for the left, you see it a little bit on the picture, there are some gray and dark areas that are very rich with recycled carbon fibers, and sometimes there are areas that are more thermoplastic heavy, so it means also the fiber volume content could differ with this kind of product. So what we choose is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the Kasai project, finding the right polymer for this application, finding the right polymer in terms of the mechanical performance, but also in terms of the viscosity that we can infiltrate pretty good into the non-woven. So that's what you see on the bottom left, some manual scattering trials where we have different grain sizes, different polymer types to investigate what's the best polymer for this kind of application. And then we went over to a very high serial production, going to automated uh, fiber or powder scattering, uh, the Berndorf double belt press, and producing these kinds of organo sheets. And the infiltration was working quite well. So we were able to produce continuous huge amounts of organo sheets that we used later on for the hot pressing, what you see in the next slides. So the parts were about two millimeters thick. And what you see really in the cross section that we have a very good infiltration quality. So here you see the comparison between on the top some fiber-based hybrids and on the bottom some powder-based hybrids. So what you see on the top is 25 and 33% fiber volume content of carbon fiber. And you see in the middle picture that some areas, they're very good. So sometimes you really achieve the fiber volume content you want and you have a very good infiltration. But there are certain other spots where you have some pores, some voids, some air inside, and so you can increase the pressure and temperature to get rid of that, this is possible, but this increases also price and more cycle time, and so that's not the way we want to go. So we choose what you see on the bottom using the powder, where you can go to 35 or even 40% in fiber volume content, leading to higher properties, of course, because of the higher carbon fiber content, and also very good infiltration quality. So what we did with the organo sheets is like we heat them up like you know it from organo sheets from new virgin products. So you have virgin products that you normally heat up and then form. And we did the same for the recycled product. So we cut out the organo sheets, move them to the IR unit, heat it up to the melting temperature, put this here on the demonstrator tooling, and then use like a back molding, like a functionalization with a PA-based polymer on the back to just show that it's possible to drape it, form it, and functionalize it all in one step process. What's pretty special here is that the oxidation and lofting is very low. That's a challenge when you work with the non-woven material that has a polymer and you heat it up 
you get a high lofting effect because of the isotropic material of the fibers will loft your non-woven, and so you also will become more space, more air, and can have an oxidation of this material. And with this process route we choose here, with this polymers and the right parameters, there was nearly no lofting and nearly no oxidation that lead to a very good product in the end. In terms of the mechanical performance, Marcus mentioned it before, the aim was to have a material that has a very high strength, high stiffness. What you see on the left is uh, an Ashby chart coming from our Fraunhofer database. So at the IGCV, we have tested now 250 different non-wovens, more or less. Uh, we ha have stored them all in our database, and you see here the mechanical performance of some of those materials. So here there's a filter active for dry lates and also PA6-based material. So every bubble here is a material that we have tested in the institute from a public-funded project, from customers, from commercial products, so different applications. And you see that is the differing or the, the scattering is quite high. So by working with recycled products, you can either produce materials with very low properties, but also going to very high. So the range is huge. And what we can see here is in the top right bubble, so in the, gr in the green one, those are the material that we use with the PA666i with the powder scattering root. So they are all really set apart from the normal PA6-based material that we tested so far. Some reasons could be, as you mentioned, the pullout test. There's a good adhesion between PA666i and the carbon fibers, but I think also because of the very good impregnation quality, the low viscosity, so that we have a very good composite material that leads to a very strength, uh, high strength composite. You also see it on the crack propagation. The crack is not going through the material. It really turns around and go in the XY axis of the material. That's something we saw very rarely with recycled material. Normally, it cracks pretty stiff right through the material. But by using this kind of material, there was a very high crack density and, and energy that go through the material. Here you can see some of the attributes from the recycled database. So as I mentioned, we test like 250 non-woven so far. And we always test the fiber, the carbon fiber, test the polymer, test the textile, and then in the end, the composite. So for all these materials that we have tested so far, we have this full data set that we use for simulations and for projects and with partners to give the people an idea how good is this material in comparison to another material. So we are always very happy and still ongoing on that um, by giving more and more data into the database and also sharing with industry partners. So to come to an end or to sum up the presentation, uh, so we think we found a route that is very good for recycling and to very good to work with the recycled carbon fiber. So when you work with the dry laid material, the powder scattering is very appropriate. You can put the tauber on top and we have a very high homogeneity product. You also have the fiber volume content you aim for, because sometimes this could be a problem that you order like 25 or 30 percent of fiber volume content, and you get something like 26 or 35 or like that, because it's not easy to control the ratio of thermoplastic fiber and carbon fiber. There could be a mixture, there could be a demixture, it can differ, but by putting the towel on top by the scattering, you always have the exact fiber volume content you want and the fiber volume content only differs like 1 to 1.5%. So it's a very homogeneous product. And because of the low viscosity, we were able to manufacture the part by lower pressure, means a cheaper production, a faster production. And I think this is very important for the recycled materials to go very, or not very, but cheaper as at the moment, because a little bit of a hurdle for recycling is always the price topic. So we need to find solutions that are cheaper, they're easier to access, and I think this could be a good way to have an acceleration for recycled products. I think from the technical point of view, I would be in the end, and I will hand over to Marcus for some okay. closing words. Thank you. OK, thank you, Frank. So thank you again for everyone listening to our presentation. Um, here are our contact details. Also, uh, time does not allow to ask uh, many questions right now, but we agreed that after our presentation, we will be in front of the speaker room. Um, if you have uh, questions for us, if you want to exchange uh, con contacts, we can do it there. Um, so what are the next steps for us from Asai Kase? Um, we have now completed our research uh, lab 
phase. We are now moving into the next stage. The next stage is running this on a pilot line, converting that to real applications. We have not yet decided how to uh, approach that. So anyone who is interested um, to help us running that on a pilot and small commercial line or interested for future applications, please reach out to us. And uh, again, thank you very much for attending today and listening to our presentation. Thank you. Thank you.